Hi, this is Amy. Thanks for stopping by this evening uh, for my part three of painting a hibiscus flower on a margarita glass. Tonight we're going to do step three, which involves fire engine red and school bus yellow. Just the two colors and it's going to be the outer petals of the flower. Again, this is my version of a hibiscus flower. Obviously, a hibiscus flower can come in a lot of different colors. I just like to paint it uh, the way I'm painting it now. And I will go ahead and, and start with that. Using a bigger brush, once again using a flat brush. And this is, I believe, the three-quarter flat. Um, I do like to use the folk art, or not folk art, excuse me, the one-stroke brushes for my glass painting and I'm just going to do some big petals, kind of similar to the inside petals. Um, maybe a little, yeah, but just bigger, obviously. I could do them and, and come up actually even further to try to cover this, which would be fine. Cover, cover the stamen, that's what I should have said. Not this. Um, but I, I'm personally not wanting to go up too far. But I'm using the bigger brush because I'm trying to do bigger petals than what I showed you yesterday. And it's just, you know, putting paint on and just kind of wiggling a little bit and coming back down. And then going back up and coming back down. I'm going back over them a little bit, try to make them a little bit more opaque. You know, sometimes people don't really care if they're opaque or not. That's a matter of choice. I kind of like mine to look more opaque, so I have a tendency to do that. I like to keep mentioning this, and sorry if it sounds like a rerun, but my favorite paint to use on gloss is Folk Art Enamels. I actually use it on just about everything I paint, whether it's wood, walls, doesn't really matter. I know I've had people at, say like Joanne, say to me, you know that's for, if I'm getting something else besides gloss, you know that's for gloss, right? Yeah, I know it's for gloss, but I also use it on other products too and it comes out just fine. Amazingly, I've done a lot of uh, murals, wall murals, used folk art enamel in my own house and for other people. And in all honesty, it comes out really nice. All right, so here we go with step number three. I might want to go over this and cover that stamen I don't want it to be that the petals are what actually is covering the stamen. I want it to look like it's inside the flower part. And again, like I said, you, you can go back over it if you want. Let it dry, go back over it. It's really up to you. Just come back down. And here you go. So this is what you're going to see when you take a drink out of your lovely glass. Not so difficult, is it? Very pretty. And you see the little stamen that we painted in there. I hope you're getting the gist of what, what takes place when you're reverse painting and why it's important to actually give it a chance to dry before you paint the next layer. That's why I say with these this type of painting, it can be a little uh, time consuming because you do have to wait in between coats. If I were painting a lot of these, what I would typically do is paint all of them, you know, one step. By the time I got done painting all of them, then start the next one. Or sometimes it took so long that by the time I was done, it was ready to call, call it an evening. But anyhow, here we go. And like I said, you can make the petals bigger and bring them on up here. I still want to keep in mind that I want the paint to not come in contact with anyone's mouth when they're drinking. So that's something to consider too when you're, you're thinking about bringing it further up. And I did bring it up on the, the next level here so you do see them. 
So anyhow, as far as painting goes, uh, make sure you clean your gloss, whether you wash it and or you do rubbing alcohol to clean off the excess grime, dirt, dust, fingerprints, whatever. Um, make sure that you do clean it before you paint. Baking it, follow the manufacturer's instructions. I get so many questions about, how, you know, how long should I bake it, or what, you know, what, how, you know, long should I cure it, or whatnot. And it's like, really, it depends on what paint you're using. And that may take some trial and error. You might find that you want to use, um, maybe you like more of a stained glass look and you want to use the Peebo paint. Or um, you care for maybe art or the deco paint. Or you like, um, i trying to think, some of the Liquitex. There's just a lot of different characters to the different paints. So depending on your painting style, and what you want to paint on the glass may determine what's, what type of paint you actually end up using. It's just a matter of your choice and really for me to tell you, I can't really do that. I have tried a lot of the painting, the glass paints and keep coming back to the folk garden enamels and I just like how they, their coverage, I like the fact that I don't actually have to bake them my understanding is that it does make them more uh, durable if you do bake them, but if you're in a situation where you're doing a lot of work that's thick on the glasses, keep in mind I have mentioned that the thicker the paint is applied, the more durable it is. However, if you put it on too thickly, then it can bubble when you bake it. So if you're someone who's doing some type of a design that you feel like maybe the paint's going to be a little too thick and you don't want it to bubble, then let it air dry. It fully cures within 21 days. That doesn't mean you can't use the glass. I would say use the glass and be very careful when you're washing it. No harsh detergents, no harsh pads or, or things that you're actually going to be using to wash the glass. Handle it like fine china. If you handle it very um, nicely and delicately like you would a piece of fine china, you're going to have a nice glass to use over and over again for many years. I have a lot of painted glass in my cupboard that were one ofs or me trying something out and one particular mug that, boy that thing gets, gets uh, who knows, sat in the sink because you're really not supposed to let the hand painted glass sit in water. Unfortunately, I found my husband doing that. Of course, when I see it, I immediately pull it out. It's been in the dishwasher, I don't know how many times, and some of the little bit of the paint has come off, but that's because of, of not being handled properly. So just keep in mind, if you handle it right, it'll be your favorite glass for years to come to drink your special wine, your favorite margarita, your favorite beer, whatever from, or to entertain with, even if you don't drink. I've done a lot of painted glassware for children or like tweens that just love my painted glassware. So it doesn't have to just be for adults only. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for part number four. Hopefully I'll get it completed in that, that stage. Maybe a part fiver, but hopefully it's just ending with part four. Again, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed this step number three. And we'll see you hopefully tomorrow. Have a good evening. Have a wonderful, safe weekend. Thank you.